If you want to be my friend, you had better go and get a pen. And maybe we can keep in touch like we did in the old days. It wasn't so long ago. Wish you well. I'd like been. to meet you, even though I don't really want to. I didn't know you, you professionally beat. But the crazy thing is, we went wow. to. We, you, we got pulled into <laughs> your beat. Done. <laughs> Go. This is not going to help the rumors that we feed our guests edibles before ah! they come on. This is not going to. People are going to still believe like that's mm. what they're doing. Mm. I'm on to them. Um, I'm on them the whole time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Reese Darby, has mm-hmm. joined us here in Thank the studio you. today on Pen Pals. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, Pen Pals. Yeah. This is my favorite button. Right here. You like this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah Reese, Reese's Pieces. Yeah. That's great. How do you say that? Reese's Pieces. <laughs> That's <laughs> different That's right. than you. What? That's a third verge. What how, what? how do I do it? Say how you said it. What? This, the pen. I said. Reese's Pieces. Reese's, Reese's pieces. 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 Well, that's his accent. Still it's different. His accent. It's yeah. accent based he says, Ray, Reese's Pieces. I like that. <laughs> he said, ask him how he says how it. How you say it? Reese's Pieces. Oh, no, that's not right. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. Get out of here. Oh. Yeah. Come yeah, on. It's yeah, one of your yeah, classic yeah. chocolates, Reese's Pieces. Reese's Pieces. Can I ask you a follow-up question? Yes. No, here we go. In your family... Yeah, when people get their birthday cards, mm-hmm. do they read them out loud to everybody in the room when they as they get each one? That's a good question. Because in my family, like if if I hand my aunt Connie her birthday card, yeah, she then reads it out loud to everybody at the party. Oh wow! And goes I love by. that. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, not oh. really. I would say yes and no. Oh, okay. I, I would probably read mine out. Yeah, but I think others might not. They might just open it up and have a look. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Some are internal readers. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I'm a big external That's my family. guy. Yeah. You're all internals. Yeah, I'm just reading that. Going, okay. Yeah. And but you then you've got people around you going, what does it what say? Does it say? <laughs> There's no money in it. It's like, let's right. keep moving. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. What are we doing? You Sometimes <laughs> the card is the best thing, or you, that's all you're getting. Sure. So when it's you know, when you've just got a card and you yeah, check yeah. to see if there's nothing, that's just uh, just a card, is it? There is a special feeling though when you open it and they bought a blank and it's written and you go, whoa. Yeah, right. They've Here's they had something they wanted to I say. I do. I do. That's mainly ha- what I do. Yeah. Yeah. So why w- write their own thing? But he, it's for them. He gave my grandma. 93 years old, when he came to Rochelle and we went to country school, yeah. he gave That's my gross. grandma a card. She tried to read it and was having trouble. Uh, and so she gave it to me. That makes it sound like she can't read. Uh, she started to cry. Uh, That's the trouble uh, she emotional. was having. <laughs> so she gave it to me. So I started to read it. Well, I'm her grandson. So then he had to take his own card and read it out loud to the two of us because we got emotional. Oh my and to God. me, though, I think That's beautiful. Yeah. I think it's more a statement on the education system of Rochelle. Rochelle. They, they couldn't read. Uh, <laughs> here's one thing I my storm, family does. I storm does. out. They, they have a card, you know, with the with the thing already written in by Hallmark or whatever. Yeah, 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 done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my mum, she used to, uh, she's not with us anymore, bless mm-hmm. her soul, but yeah. she used to circle things in the writing that she liked. So have a special day. Special would be circled. Would highlight a little I bit. I love yeah. that. Because so that, that's what yeah. spoke to her to speak yeah. to you. Oh, I'll circle the special. I, I have a special day. And <laughs> yeah, all the best with you and your family. Family, underline family. That's important. Yeah. So she would do that. This that is was, genuine. I that really lovely. I yeah. do love that. Extra effort. 100%. Was she trying to solve a crime? If you just put all the cards together, <laughs> I will <laughs> confess to killing your dad no, in yeah. 74. Yeah, no, what? You read it and you're like, if you just read those words, it says, unfortunately, born son. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, she's shit talking yeah. me. Wait, you put them adopted. All <laughs> yeah. Wait. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry. doing letters. That's so that why it you're up. weird. Uh, uh, um, should I, we do it? Wonderful. Yes, let's do it. Let's, let's go, go to the letters! letters. You, were, you came in strong in the end. That's yeah. all that matters. Whoa. Oh, oh, is that my one? He nope. threw it at you. Deal with nope, that came well, from a book. We haven't done that in a long time. <sighs> okay. This is me? Yep. 
This is Mate. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I'm Mate. <laughs> All right, I got the right one here, right? I think so. Hiya, pen pals. All right, I got to do it again. Said in Roy's radio announcer, Hiya, pen pals. My name is Jacqueline, she, her, and I'm a recent penny working on becoming a paller. I first heard of the Pen Pals podcast when it was promoted. Conan O'Brien, uh, on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. Though I didn't immediately check it out, huge mistake on my part, but it means I have a plethora of episodes to enjoy and catch up now. I rediscovered your podcast after searching for more episodes of podcasts with Pete Holmes as a guest because I love hearing him talk with guests and podcast hosts about life and go to depths people don't normally go to in everyday conversation. I've always been heavy. What do you need? Do you need something? No. Is that what it was? I'm oh. okay. I was looking and then I was like, I'll find it later. I've always been heavy on the existentialist thinking, and it gives me comfort to hear people like Pete talk about the weird and wonderful things in life we're all going through, but don't always talk about. Anyway, I listened to his episode on the Pinfels pod and instantly fell in love with you two and have since listened to both of your episodes on Pete's You Made It Weird podcast as well. Since discovering, I've been listening to the Pinfels catalog daily and I'm probably 150 episodes deep now. How many do you think we've done? I thought we've done like 10. She might be listening to the wrong thing. 10. 10. (laughs) One of, my, <laughs> one of my 2023 bucket list goals was to write a letter to you, and here I am writing. Well, emailing, but we'll definitely send snail mail in the future. So today I was listening to an older episode entitled Communications and Ghosts, and the scene in Ghostbusters where Ray, Dan Aykroyd, gets a blowjob by a ghost was brought up, LOL. But did you know that Dan Aykroyd himself is a huge ghost and paranormal fanatic, and Ghostbusters were partially born of his love, fascination, and conviction in all things otherworldly? Dan has described his ghostly encounters in interviews, and one story entails a ghost that he described as coming on to him. One night in his Beverly Hills home, Mr. Aykroyd felt a ghost crawl into bed with him, which proceeded to spoon him. Dan then snuggled up to the ghost and had one of the best sleeps of his life. (laughs) This begs the question, how would you react to a sensual ghost encounter like the one Dan Dan Aykroyd experienced or his character Ray experienced in Ghostbusters? And if you had a partner, would you consider that cheating if you accepted the ghost's advances? P.S. I enjoyed the debate and the adding of the S at the end of the theme, but I firmly believe the final line of If You Want to Be My Friend by Patrick Kenyon and the Winter Sounds is signed your pen pal, singular, as the whole song is written as one person singing it. If you want to be my friend, not multiple people singing If You Want to Be Our, f- our Friend. Love you guys lots. You make me laugh incessantly and hope it never stops. Kindly, Jacqueline. Do do be ding ba ba. Let's unpack it. Reese, do you want to fuck ghosts or not? <laughs> That's what this is about. <laughs> I mean, they've definitely fucked me. Mm. Yeah. Um, Have you ever had a ghost I've encounter? Had, I've had a real ghost experience. <gasps> Wait, truly? Yeah, this saying. is real? This is what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Brett yeah. Goldstein had too, but he he wouldn't go into it. He was too, still too scared really? about it. Yes. It's still too visceral. Okay, hit wow. us. What happened? So this was a few years ago when I was performing at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <coughs> exact year. Scottish ghost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, not sure. Around the early 2000s. I was doing my own solo show, so I could work it out in my head, but I haven't got time. Um, but back then, I was in a small room, uh, audience size 12. You know, it sat sold 40. Out, sold out. Sold out. <laughs> oh, <I love laughs> sold out in Edinburgh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, standing room. Some of those room. Standing room only. You know, s- hundreds of shows. Now, I'm, here's the thing, though. I was in this, the <coughs> venues over there. I don't know whether you've been to mm-hmm. Edinburgh, Dublin right. Festival, but uh, back in the day, I think it's the same now, uh, but they were opening up anything as a venue. And yeah. They oh, you'll be in places and they'll go, you know, they used to kill people. In oh, here. yeah. It's sure. a bathroom. Yeah. This is a bad. This is a, ba- a, yeah. a fully functioning bathroom that used to serve as an education. People will come room. in here. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I was in this uh, venue called Cave Three, and they were the caves. They were, uh, which a, sounds like a horror movie, by the way. Have you seen Cave Three? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? It's the best one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was underneath the city, <clears throat> and it's where they used to store all the um, the dead bodies during the plague. Shut so, up. Yeah, they opened it. Well, all did up. you know this? You knew ahead of time. Oh yeah. Or you? Oh okay. Yeah. We're just excited. Because this is also one of those things that after you tell someone what happened yeah. to you, they go, well, you know. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. no, we okay. knew so going you knew. in. Okay. But, you know, we're strong Kiwi, uh, you know, <laughs> battlers. So we uh, we just go for it. And, uh, yeah, in the middle of my show, I'm just I'm, I'm performing a little one-hour thing to the audience. And I'm about 30 minutes in. And then this uh, I get this feeling up the back of my spine. 
and it's uh, it's cold and it goes right up my spine. No. And then I, I was, no. I've never. You're on stage. I'm on stage in front of people. Yeah. Okay. And mid routine. Yes. And and then this sensation I've never felt before was like it was cold. It was like it's hard to describe, but it, you can you feel like something has attached itself to you that is not part of you, and it Reese. goes right up the back of your neck, and then come straight out of my head. Yeah. And and it went. There was two lights uh, in the um, at the at the other end of the room. Obviously, well, you felt to go up and then out, and then came out of my head, and then I I saw it go and hit the light. So it went straight to the light, and I just have froze, and I. And the audience were like, what, "What's the what's the punchline to this piece?" You and know? you're like, "I don't even I, know what I'm talking you're about." Like, oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> you're like, "Guys, I'm not even on the same plane as ex of existence as you are right now." Uh, exactly. I said, "Did anyone else see that?" And then no one saw anything. Which now and they I'm, still think is a bit. Yeah, they, exactly. Oh. And I said, I just had to go. Uh, I, and I explained what I, had, I paused. You know, this is a while ago now, sure. so I can't remember exactly what happened. But I I definitely had to close the show at that point, and people left. <laughs> and I remember people were leaving. And some people were saying, oh, I think he just ran out of material. You know? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but I got the place blessed. So there were, I wasn't the only one that felt um, a, uh, a, a spirit. Presence, yeah. And so the next day we had a priest come in with holy water and all that kind of stuff. And it was in the newspapers. Anyway, the other guy, <clears throat> another person, had a similar experience and left Edinburgh. They just couldn't said, I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. Uh, but me, I once I got the ad in the paper. Uh, sorry, the article. I, I knew my numbers were going to go. Oh yeah. yeah! So the rest yeah. of my my uh, my run sold out. Yeah. Wow. But that was my 15 experience. Fifteen people at a show. Man, sold out. I. Th it's so funny that when there is a ghost, it, like we have, like we need someone to come and bless it, as yeah. though the interpretation of the ghost is ill. Like it is a. It is mean. It's here to yeah. like yeah. do the work. Well, did of it the feel? Devil. Negative as it went through, or did it just uh, feel foreign? That's a good question. It was just, uh, it was just. Make sure that catches you. I don't want us to lose anything. It was just uneasy. Okay. So I don't. It wasn't negative as in, oh my gosh, of like dread or doom. Yeah, no dread. Like it was just <sighs> um, the uh, the uneasiness was because it was so foreign, and and I definitely felt like something went through my body and yeah. energy and. Uh, it was it was enough for me to stop the show and for me to go yeah. to be flabbergasted basically. Yeah. Well, um, also the 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 we're on some level like even in this setting and certainly when we're you know, in a theater like you're on stage. Yeah. But I imagine you know sometimes like edits will get left in a podcast. It's probably happened to us, and you can sort of hear us talk in a tone or a way that isn't on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I imagine your sentence of did anyone else see that was, was so purely different. not on stage oh yeah 100%. and maybe they couldn't have tell because it was happening in real well, time he dropped this fake accent yeah <laughs> i was like did it's, you guys see that hey there did you guys see that <laughs> what's going on here are they really out of reese's pieces out, yeah. out there in concessions Whoa. um did you is there any party that thought like have I been, did the ghost leave anything inside me? Am I like possessed in some, did you have the priest come and like do any sort of holy water to you? Like blessing you in some way? <laughs> no, uh, but that's a great, that's a great part. Maybe. But I feel like as much as you felt it, mm. you would have felt anything residual as well because you felt it so much when it was there. Yeah. Once it was gone. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like I've changed as a person since then. Sure. But from that moment onwards, Oddly, I've been wildly successful. Yeah. I mean, hey, whatever you it takes. You sold your soul. Yeah, it's a little Faust, soul. little Faust action over soul. here. And I've also just been very nasty. What he's not telling is right before he went out, he looked between the curtains and he saw those 12 people. And I'd sell my soul just a <laughs> few more people <laughs> in here. Just a few more yeah. people. And the devil was like. <laughs> it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark, I picture. The like yes. light and like moving around. Yep. So this is, to, to bring it back to this, that's what the spooning thing is odd to me. Because I've never heard anyone have a ghost encounter that felt warm. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's almost, it would be a cold hand yeah. uh, wrapped or like spooning into. Yeah. The idea of, of what you imagine the visceralness of what you felt, and then someone else going, gave me the best sleep of my life. Mm. Like, what two mm. completely opposite energies 
But this is exactly it, and you've said it, energy. I mean, it's weird that it is cold, because energy, you would think, would be warm, right? It's yeah, energy. I could, yes. So how is it cold? And I look, looking back at my experience, was it cold, or was it just, it was, a, it was a, an experience, this thing right up the back of my neck? I don't know. It wasn't cold, cold. Right, right, right. But I, I, maybe it's the wrong word to use. But um, if, it were, if it had stayed there, would I, would I find it comforting enough to... Let it spoon me for the night. I, I don't. <laughs> I, no, no way. I'd be like, "What the hell is this attached yes. to me?" Yeah, it was an extra energy that, um, it's especially for anyone who doesn't like being touched or whatever, that would be yeah. like, get the hell out of here. At least you know, ask for permission. Also, yeah, like every horror movie, not every, so many horror movies have the shot where you're uh, angling on the person from the side, like sleeping like this. Yeah. Mm. And then, you know, the camera like comes up over them oh, and you there's see a, there's a yeah, ghost like right there. Yeah. Dan Aykroyd's telling you he willingly slept with a ghost's mouth yeah. next to his ear and. And best night's sleep he's breathing. ever had. <sighs> but it wouldn't be breathing, would it? Because it doesn't need to. So what is it but doing? But it could gen maybe generate. This is also where you start to split hairs between energy, mm. uh, vision of an actual spirit. Person, right. kind of humanoid looking, like was Dan yeah. drinking that night out of his skull vodka his, bottle? Yeah, was was d Mr. I mean, Aykroyd probably. wasted and thought he slept with a ghost? Did he just sleep with the person who yeah. broke into his home? But here's the thing: Were you a high on Scottish Kush <laughs> that night that you thought? <laughs> <laughs> when you have been influenced by uh, something, alcohol or drugs, you're more likely to see and feel things. Yeah, we talk about it. You change your frequency. Yeah, your frequency is different. Yeah. So that's when you're, you're letting things in. So when they say, "Oh, were you drunk or were you wasted? Were you high?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's why I saw it. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, right. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's like getting high. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so the, yeah. The yeah that's, that's how I was able to yeah. get out of my head and open yeah. myself up to more of the exactly. universe around me. Yeah. That's why I felt the pain of a tree. Yeah. Because I, I was no longer. As a kid, I never understood the, the, the ghost blowjob in Ghostbusters. I never understood. I did find the, it erotic, I will admit. Sure. But as, as a kid, I don't know. Well, one, I didn't understand that that's what was happening. Because she's pretty. She's a pretty ghost. Yeah. But they're not like, who was like, look, we're going to, it's like, that's on the page. He did yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah, everyone yeah. was like, it's it, no, was no one like, is that the movie we're making? <laughs> <laughs> There's no other. It is a bit that. of a turn for Ray. It's so weird. <laughs> it's like yeah. the weirdest. And then they switch, right? Between we as the audience can see the ghost, this uh, attractive woman. Yeah. And then they switch to uh, his zippers going down all by itself. Yeah, yeah. I will and say. And then he like rolls he like rolls his eyes and crosses one. Oh, yeah. Like falls back. I will say it's that. It's cold. <laughs> yeah. If I was drunk or high and very much more like, who fucking care, whatever. Mm. If I w was starting to engage in a sexual experience with a ghost, I would 100% let it roll. Go for it. Yeah, and I don't think it's cheating. These you're are all, you're operating on different levels of existence. To, to, to Literally for ads on for a different show plane that yeah. play on like a local radio. Yeah, if I was gonna fuck a ghost, I'd let it happen. You're listening to Light Rock. Would you stop it? <laughs> uh, I mean, sometimes it's hard to stop those kind of things, right? You know. Especially but also, there's nothing there, so no. It seems like a wet dream on VR. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'd take that too. <laughs> I, take I that think that's too. what it is. I think if you have a sexual encounter with a ghost, it's a wet dream on but virtual Rory, reality. <laughs> if you're on tour in some old ass hotel and you, I, I make good money, Daniel. We don't have to tell. Just say these we people. found ourselves. We've <laughs> all just ridden rundown <laughs> hotel. You're in New Orleans, and right. you didn't expect to have to stop there for the night. So you never know. There's only one place with vacancy. Would you the next day? In any way, feel like you need to tell your wife, Jordan, like, I have something to tell you. I would tell everyone of who course. would listen. And if Jordan was like, I would include so you're saying it. you cheated on me, wouldn't you just laugh her out of the room? Yes. She hit on you. Yes. I'd be like, hey, hun, if you can if you can find a ghost that wants to fuck you, good luck. Yeah. Go for it. Good luck. Go for it. Also, I crushed that night, babe. The ghost or the set? set? Oh, okay. I would be telling the waiter or waitress at breakfast. I'd be like ordering breakfast, like a fucking ghost last night. Yeah. And so. if they were like, "Oh, they know what room you're in right yeah. away." Yeah. Oh, you the. Oh, and that's when they're like, "Old man Thompson." Oh, old man <laughs> Thompson. <laughs> what? And now you're like, "Am I gay, honey?" I'm oh my gay. god. I'm at least bi. I'm at least bi. I'm in at least the real willing. world. Yeah. 
I won't seek it out, but I'm willing to accept cis it. Cis male, but in the realm of <laughs> the afterlife, I'm gay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I now know that about myself. You exist on a different level. Different frequencies, dude. Yeah, you, I thought you were going to say this too when you talked about that happening. <laughs> this is the sort of thing where people go, oh, have you... I knew this guy, he claimed to be abducted by aliens, and it really, like, ugh, you just... 30 seconds into knowing him, that's all he'll talk about. It's all the guy, it's like his whole identity is I got abducted by aliens. Mm-hmm. And I, my attitude's always been, <clears throat> if that really happened to you, how would you talk about anything else? Yeah, taxes. You have been <laughs> taken into space and <laughs> prodded or yeah. probed, which is sort of hacky, but even just experienced another level of being... Yeah. And then you were supposed to come back here and go get milk? Yeah. No. Mm. Like, of course that yeah. becomes a, such a big identity of who you are. You've experienced something that makes you feel like so much of this is n- doesn't matter. Right. Right? Absolutely. You're in a small group. And, yeah. I mean, we only... You are too, though. I'm in a small with group. With your story? I th- with Ghost the, people? I've never heard but, something like that. I never uh, have yeah. either. No, I guess, I guess so. I'm not a fan of ghosts in general. So I, <laughs> so I mean, you I ended didn't, the show. I, didn't, I, I guess you know, some people might have that experience and then really look into them and really you know start ghost hunting or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, I've seen those shows and stuff, and they just don't. They do nothing for me. People walking around in the dark with you know the um, night vision goggles yeah. and some dude with a you know rattling a door. Like, who, someone what has, else is on? Someone right, has a I joke agree. about those shows and how they never actually they can't. catch or yeah. find a ghost. Because <laughs> if they do, it's over. It's the same as <laughs> yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah. You're, yeah. Sure, you're, finding you're Bigfoot. not I mean, getting a third season if you yeah. find them in going, season two. But they never, ever, there's no ever, there's never a ghost. Never right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you never experienced anything since? or, bef- or Ghost-wise? Because <clears throat> uh, I would say that if that happened to you on stage, you could yeah. you could operate on a frequency that is like, Oh, I'm tuned in to maybe a little something You're a more. Ghost whisperer. I think I don't know. I think I think what it says to me is I I do expel a lot of energy on stage. I'm mm-hmm. quite a physical performer, mm-hmm. and I think I was I was at the right place at the right time when a spirit just was went. Oh, I'm going to attach myself to that, and then it realized, oh no, this is weird. Uh, I'm going to get out of here and shot for the light. I guess yeah. that didn't stick with me, or maybe maybe they can't stay in yeah. human energy for very long. Um, <coughs> but yeah. I mean, it happened, and I got over it. I 100%, just for the record, maybe you've already in tune to this, believe you. Oh, thank you. 100%. It just... I... Oh, here we go. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. I totally believe you. God, I don't know what I would do. I. It's so funny, the entertainment entertainer in me as yeah. you told that i yeah. go how did he finish the show like that was my <laughs> first question it was like oh, what do you do after that do you how much yeah, time would you say you're closer 30 seconds the whole thing what is that that's my pants. don't worry you're fine okay. he's got phone pants oh i literally thought it was your pants for a second oh, okay. also i also I, with this jacket you would think the pants there was anything talk. yes <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was me or rory and i was hoping it was him and okay. not me i didn't think it was you at all um, would you say about thirty seconds you maybe took to the read to jump back in? To jump I mean It goes I, into you. Yeah. It comes out. Yeah. You say, Did anybody else see that? They look at you like, that wasn't funny. I'm like this. I'm like, Oh, uh sh- did anyone see what just happened then? Yeah. And no one's like, No, what what? And then I just take a breath. Yeah, it's a, you know definitely a good thirty, thirty wow. to forty seconds of just trying to get over it. And then, and then I, and actually, can't go back into my comedy. I no. think I, I think I shut things down at that point. I, I I'm gonna sit down. Because yeah, I, it was an experience whereby it wasn't just well, that was weird. It was one of those ones where I don't know, no, nothing like that you can, has ever happened to me For before. Sure. So you think something's it changes your perception of reality. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh man, it does. It's a shame there. you didn't get to sleep with that ghost, like yeah. Daniel Aykroyd. Yeah. Um, this is a great letter, Jacqueline. Thank when you. We, when we have Dan very on, we'll much. ask him about it. We have Dan on. We're gonna ask him about that ghost blowjob. But thank you for bringing that up because that makes me laugh so much when I look back and think about that movie. Like it seems so out of place and weird. Um, but Jacqueline, thank you so much. We wish you well. Sincerely, your pen pals, Rory Scovel, Daniel Van Kirk, and, and Reese Darby. 
Erwin Wilbeck. Oh, we're back. <laughs> hugs Plug and plugs. Hugs and, hugs and plugs, ladies Rory? and gentlemen. Uh, go to RoryScoville.com. You can see all my tour dates. We had to move some things around, and I want to apologize to everybody that had tickets in May uh, and people that had tickets uh, for Seattle and Portland and Vancouver. We had to move some stuff around. Uh, but we will reschedule You're and we'll the get them out there. So go to RoyScoville.com for all those uh, updates. And I also believe Physical Season 3 will drop on August 2nd. Whoa, right in time for our birthdays? That's right. I had them do it for us. Awesome. Also, this is the end of the month. If we've made any developments on our um, pen anniversary, we will. you should go check that out wherever we've said you can find it. Probably yeah. both our websites. That's right. Definitely in the Patreon if you're there. Uh, DanielVanKirk.com for my dates. At this point, it's the end of May when this is dropping. I may have announced some already. If I don't look out for them, it'll probably be in the back half of the summer in the fall. I'm working on some stuff for that. Otherwise, you can come to the Cat's Crawl every other Monday to check out my stand-up show that I do with Irene 2. DanielVanKirk.com. Reese, what are you up to? What do you got going on in June, July? Uh, not much. Okay. I got good. A, good. I got some gigs coming up in uh, late August, mm-hmm. so uh, keep an eye out for that if you're in the New York region. Oh, I love that. Yeah. There's no more details at this stage, but okay. uh, other than that, a couple of tweets coming out soon. Check Ooh. out my TikToks. Woo! What's Half your the siren uh, there? What are the handles? How can people follow you? Uh, too hot to handle. <laughs> uh, that wasn't taken. No, <laughs> that's mine. You're like I do. You're like I do with the numbers. Also, too hot to trot. Ooh, which is another one. Too hot to handle. Too cold yeah. to hold. They called the Ghostbusters in the ring at Reese Darby. Thank you. It's just thinking of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Reese's um, Pieces Darby. Yeah, Pieces yeah. of Reese's. Yeah, that's your non-verified, grandma. obviously. So uh, oh, none of us are. No, anymore. Well, well, I don't believe that. Then look for the one without the tick. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's got a tick, that's yeah, not me. That's not me. Wait, what do you direct people to when they go, I want to watch you in something? What do you like to direct people yeah, to? What do you say? I say go outside, have some fun. Just <laughs> like, go to, yeah. stand outside my window, Keep watch fit. me. And you're like, I'll be out there. <laughs> I'll be out there. <laughs> I'll be out there busking <laughs> in a suburban in neighborhood. Yeah. Busking on a neighborhood street where <laughs> no one else is. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I think you're great. You want to uh, do a letter? Mm. Let's get to that letter. Shake. Hello, pals. Hi. I am a passionate amateur alpinist. Alpinist. Alpinist? I think so. Are you 100% certain? No. Who can be this day? Alpinist, alpinist. Well, I know the context of this. So it would be alpine? I I wonder. I just don't know if it changed. They both work. Oh, awesome. I kind of like with doesn't seem confident. Pals and pen pals and pen pal on our theme song. I love anything to do with mountains, rock climbing, ice climbing, ski mountaineering, etc. I find that the more I dive into this lifestyle, the happier I am. However, the sport carries a significant amount of risk. In the mountains, you are constantly exposed to object uh, objective hazards, rockfall, avalanche, basically stuff that can randomly hurt or kill you that is out of your control, and also danger for making a mistake like falling while soloing moderate terrain. Most people seem to view anyone partaking in these dangerous hobbies as just adrenaline junkies, and while that's, cert- while that's certainly a part of it, there's much more to it. I'm not a good enough writer to explain. It just seems more real and scratches an itch that everyday life doesn't. Anyways, what do you think of dangerous hobbies? Have you ever found yourself risking life and limb for fun? From Brendan. I never get that from. We haven't got a sign off of from. No. From. There's a sound at the end. Dangerous hobbies. Have you done any of that stuff? I mean, I listed here. I do the odd thing, like uh, for sure. In New Zealand, we uh, we risk takers. Yep. We're adventurers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we invented some extreme sports. So you did? bungee jumping, that comes from New Zealand. No shit. Yeah. Now is this true or is this one of those things you just know that we'll never look up? I really <laughs> thought I really thought you were gonna go. Now is this true or is this that little like that story you just told about? <laughs> or is this like that ghost story <laughs> that you sold Daniel on? Because he's gullible and he dove right I, in. I have four <laughs> timeshares. <laughs> I bungee jumped with a ghost. Like, oh, I'm the ghost. Someone probably uh, has. It was, it, bungee jumping was invented in New Zealand? Yeah. 
Yeah, wow. For sure. Um, I, the first people doing it terrify me. Because by now, they've got it figured out. Right? Still, still accidents it's can still happen. Happens. Accidents can happen. But yeah. the first people, accidents were way more likely to happen. Yeah, right. We're like, oh, I guess that knot didn't work. We should change that knot next that time we knot. do it. <laughs> um, have cord. you done it? Yes. I've done uh, the original. You know. Well, that's you have to. Off Skipper's Canyon. Uh, the, yeah. the place where? In, in uh, Queenstown, New Zealand. Yeah, it's Skipper's off a, Canyon. It's off a bridge. How old were you? Oh, my God. Oh, I, would, I was in my uh, early 20s. And as a New Zealander, you oh, kind of have to do it. To write a passage? Yeah, you've got to do it. And uh, I'll never do it again. It was uh, Tell me, me. I want to know the feeling. So they, they put the stuff around your leg. You've got the bungee cord attached. Are you feeling good at this point? Or? No. No, no you're not. Yeah, I mean, you're there. You're, fe- you're feeling excited, I guess. Now, you know, and, how high is this bridge? Oh, gosh. And don't throw meters at me. You know we're not going to yeah, come on. Be nice. <laughs> Keep yards, who knows? Yards. Uh, <laughs> Four it's, yards. It's... it's, it's t- so high that when you look down, the river is, you know, the size, tiny. the length of your yeah, yeah, finger. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. It's, yeah. Oh, you're oh my there. God. There's a tiny river down the bottom. This and is crazy. Of, of the, yeah. if, if you were with a group, are you the first one to go or have other members gone or are you are you just the only person going yeah, I, that day? I can't recall what okay, the group then that was, matter. but I, I definitely, I mean, I'm, I'm, I may have been second or third. I don't know whether I was. Because I feel like if Rory and I went, I feel like I would w- go after you, but then I would understand if you wanted me to go first because you have a kid. I don't think I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can, it's like the parachute thing. You can do it with the instructor too. I think there's an option. You, you can, can tandem do. bunch. You can tandem. Um, never, I but that's, never, I that, seems that. Even, that seems worse, right? Like yeah. You're looking at the weight of that person thinking, well, has this been, yeah. have we measured this right? Same cord? Yeah. I also yeah, would yeah. be more afraid way that if we snapped, their life's going to flash before my eyes. I need yeah. to be by myself. Yeah. My own. I want to be in my own grief. I don't, need to lo- I don't need to be dealing with your fear yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. This is my time to die. Because you have to share a headline, too. I mean, we know all of us. I like yeah. that. We want top You're not going to get a headline. Yeah. Oh, so come here we on. go. You get I was just like, you're not going to get a headline. People <laughs> die bungee jumping every day in New York. I New bet you. <laughs> That's so funny. They just dropped the headline thing. Hey, yeah. the Rochelle <laughs> News Leader. The Rochelle <laughs> News Leader <laughs> would yeah. do it. And they'd probably yeah. use my birth name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I love that. Former RTHS grad. They don't and even so see you, my name. So you go to do it. And okay, it's yes. Yes. So they're tying the stuff on you. Yes. Okay. So I'm out there right on the edge. It's all secured, you know. The the I mean, this is the this is the official one. So it's mm-hmm. it was A J Hackett. He's the guy that okay. invented this God, thing and turned today. it into a, a company that yeah. was uh, not Tim Bungie certifiable, <laughs> huh. but also no. kind of a funny name because <laughs> can you hack it? Exactly, like hack it. Yeah, oh, it does surname. work. Yeah. So you're on oh. the edge, and uh, and basically, I th- oh man, I'm getting like sweaty. The, palms the worst from... part is oh. you look you look down. You can't help but look down. I yeah, mean, some yeah, people yeah. I guess wouldn't, but I I'm looking down. I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's the last thing I'm gonna see. And when you when you when you go, so oh. you they they count you down, and then they can either give you a little push. Some people. I was gonna ask if you jumped yeah, or you fall. Or or for me, I just I just tipped over. You know, but that is the worst moment because you you don't when really f- you f- the thing around your leg you can't really feel. Yeah, you, 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 you hope know, it's there. You, you so when you oh leave, I would so many times I would have been like show me the carabiner one more time. Yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, I, you can do all of that. As I picture there. it, are you are you like this or can you spread or is it like yeah, your legs like are together? That? Okay, got your it. Legs okay, are yeah. together. In that moment of when you feel that your your point of gravity has tipped, yeah. that's that's oh what I like to call the mm-hmm. uh, the sort of, I felt like I was committing suicide. Yes. yes. Not that I've ever felt that, but that has felt like there's there's no going back. I'm I'm th- I've had it. This is it. This is there's it. No, this either works or I die. I can't feel it on your thing. So you're just like jumping off a building, and uh, and so there's a there's a and I I tried I just absolute you, the the rush of adrenaline Oof. is so huge, and I I tried to say the f word very like. Fuck! But yeah. I couldn't close my mouth, so the whole all I said was "fuck," oh. and all the way down, <laughs> and then my head just gently dipped into the water. No, they got it that yeah. measured oh, out. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, this is the company, man. It's the New Zealanders. Hack it, and then yeah, <laughs> AJ knows what he's, he's doing. Hack it, baby. Yeah. And then you, uh, and then you, and then you, you, then you bounce back up, and then and as you're coming up, you know, you can start doing your in in that word, kake, kakak. <laughs> uh, what, in hell, uh, that was not. That was nice. That was fun. You know, and then you said, "Woo!" But, but then you have to do it kind of like 
bouncing up and a down. A few more times. Did, just yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Did sort you want to do it again right away, after, right <laughs> after you did it? I haven't wanted to do it since then. I just meant in the wake of the adrenaline. Oh, no, hell no. No, I think... I'm, you know, some people are adrenaline junkies, they call them. These guys that yeah. do the base jumping and do the rock climbing person yeah. here yeah. and all that kind of stuff. They love <coughs> the idea that they could almost die any second. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm, uh, not like, like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm same. Yeah, I've got yeah. to live. Yeah. I've got so much to give. I've yes. got kids. I've yes. got yes. art. I've got, you know, no, the world kids, needs kids. me, kids. right? Yeah, kids. Yeah. I've got kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And <laughs> you've seen my art. I've yes. got art. People need it. <laughs> they do. You know? you w had you died, you would have deprived a lot of people of joy. Yeah. So I think um, I, you know, I owe it to the fans to never do anything of like course, that again. Of course. That's how we live our lives. That's right. Ugh. But here's the other thing. Uh, there is something inside me, because I'm from New Zealand, that enjoys the risk-taking sort of uh, adventure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have climbed a mountain. I've climbed uh, Kilimanjaro. This in, is interesting. In You'll do these things that you're not really attracted to do. <laughs> no. I hated it the whole time. Yeah. I, and I climbed do that you mountain. Feel, and he you, hates you stand up. He won't you, tell anybody. He'll do it. He does it, but he hates doing it. <laughs> this, is, I, I, this culture I don't know much about, mm -hmm. right? And you talked about bungee jumping being like a rite of passage. Do you sort of feel a, a countryman duty bound almost to, is it any of that? Because you said it about being a rite of passage of bungee yeah. jumping. Mm. Do you feel like, well, I'm from this country and it's sort of ingrained yes. as to who we are. Yes. That, so, I, so I will experience these things and go, and, yeah. and go on these adventures. Yeah, yeah you don't want to be a pussy. No. Do it, man. <laughs> you gotta go I'm for it. Sit it. there <laughs> writing down ideas and doing a podcast. You gotta get out there <laughs> and actually touch Ew, the gross. Yeah. I will so gross. for a while, uh former guests on this show, Chris Sullivan and I, were doing like going to a rock climbing gym. And there is a and I tell this to people who've never done it. I might have said it once on here before. It, I don't care if you're three feet off the ground climbing a rock climbing gym or you're in out in real nature doing it 150, 300 feet off the ground. Even in the rock climbing gym, there is a point at which you realize that's where you would have died. Had you been trying to climb out of something or been on the side, that's the moment where no matter what you thought mentally, mm. your body said, no, yeah. we're not mm. doing this. And I think that's a, ra a high that people get off the things you're talking about, that marathoners can get on yeah. it too, because you push yourself to a limit where you find out w w whether or not you can hack it. Mm. You find out like what you're made of. Mm. Yeah. And it does tell you things about yourself. It makes you feel alive to realize how close you are to of not having it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that when you went off the edge and you were like, yeah, this. So this is what death is like. Yeah. 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 Or the lead up to it. Yeah. Oh, wow. What a rush. What about skydiving? Have Any interest? I haven't done that. And, and look, my aunt Connie did it. Once I did. Well, you've done it. My aunt Connie did oh, it. And I was like, what? She was like, yeah, I want to do this. And yeah. I'm like, and she did well, it. She did do it. Yeah. That one, some people say, is uh, easier than the bungee. I think so. Some people, because you can see the bottom with bungee. You're on a, you know, it just doesn't seem right. But when you're way up on a plane, all you do is just jump out, and you kind of, and then you kind of halfway through it realize, oh, I'm falling to the earth. Yeah. Um, and you and a lot of people tandem on those, and I would, you know, you yeah. I think you have to tandem right at the start before you're trained and everything. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a much more involved process. It's if a you big process. Want your first jump to be so falling to the planet. Uh, not into it. I don't, don't know why. I don't do think it. I'd do it, yeah. but I am attracted to it. We've if I had full military gear and I was being dropped in behind enemy uh -huh. lines, uh -huh. for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. No other bound. reason. Right. Different yeah. motivation. Yeah. We've yeah. all seen the video of the New Zealand go to war a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do, you know, when we when we when we have to, when, when the world needs upon. us. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um we've all seen the video of the Red Bull guy who essentially was in space. Oh yeah. And jumped. Yeah, that was a what big a one. Oh yeah. He jumped what from oh, space. Yeah. What a didn't it take him like eleven minutes or something? It was insane. He still he had to have up like there the suit. <laughs> he never yeah. made it. He yeah. went too high and kind of yeah. went up the other way. Oh shit, guys. Almost we, to the moon. I got out yeah. too high. Yeah. 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 He jumped to the moon. My my thing if I ever bungee jump or if uh, I ever skydive is I would want I wouldn't want my fear, which you, I don't think you get to control, mm. to overtake the moment of experiencing it. Like, if I'm going to jump into the ground, I want to see it. I want to watch the ground come up at me. And yeah. I don't know if if I would be so like, ah, like, fuck. I'd be like, oh, I didn't process. I didn't. 
I didn't look at it. Yeah, I didn't yeah, watch yeah. it. That's part of the, I think, the joy of mm. skydiving is once you pull your chute and you're like, cool, you're there. Now that slow process down it. lets you really yeah. get see perspective and see the world in a way in which you've never seen that's it. That's the whole thing is that seeing the world in a way you've never seen before and you have a new appreciation of everything, yeah. of, of life itself. Yeah. There's a documentary about a guy who was a free climber. You're deep. You are deep, and I I'll love it. There's a <laughs> oh. <laughs> love a good self undermine. <laughs> uh, there's a documentary about a uh, a guy. This came out a couple of years ago. He's a free climber. He did a lot of ice stuff, and a, a lot of those people. Not a lot. Um, Two of them. Yes. But enough for it to be a thing <laughs> of those total. people and their lives do end tragically, whether yeah. they're doing Some the squirrel do. shoots do. and the stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it is tragic and it's sad. It is. But I think the part of what you also sort of touched on is if it if that wasn't the chance, they wouldn't be doing this. It almost is that cheat of death of getting close to the void of knowing that like yeah. this could go wrong that make that makes them and so many people even on whatever level they do it feel so alive. Mm. Yeah, well, it's I think that's what they're thing. they're saying yeah. here. Brendan's saying in this is that that's what there feels like. There's something more to it. An itch to scratch. What did, what did it feel like to climb uh, that mountain, Kilimanjaro? You did. Yeah. What was that like? Tough. Yeah. Air was it an air issue too? About that high. What's that? Oxygen issue that high too? Uh, no, no, okay. but it was seven days up, two days down. So we camped along the way and uh, I had a chest infection that came on like halfway through. And so I really struggled for the last, um, the last two days. They were going to take me down. They thought I had altitude sickness, but I said, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it. I'm going to get to the summit. And uh, the air was so thin at the top that I was walking so slowly along the along this path like you know so you don't need equipment you mm -hmm. can walk this one but uh it is so intense when you look down you're almost look like if you take a wrong step you'll you'll fall uh, but you're on this tiny thin path and um we had porters so they had our packs and yep. things but um i had two jackets on might have might have been because it's so cold out there I had three actually three jackets two sets of gloves two pairs of, of uh, you know winter pants oh my god and i'm moving like so slowly to walk i'm uh, like like a really old guy that's trying to he's in the rest home and he's just trying to get to the toilet <laughs> you know and it's like but he's his bones are gone and he's on his last legs and i so honestly it was like i don't know what the speed i was doing but like i i, I, I feel like a snail could have yeah kept Kept up but with me. And Reese, we've only interacted a couple times. I'm mm. saying what I'm going to say is I'm sincere, but you kept going. Kept going. Like it's that's so. Yeah. That to me is like magical. It. That's like to get yourself to that point of be like, I'm going to keep going. We, mm -hmm. I think some of the things of like, not to be flippant, but like the Rocky movies like resonate oh, with so yeah. many people. It's that moment of watching a guy, certainly like in Rocky Four and stuff like that, where he's like, you pick it back up, you keep fucking going, yeah. and like you bet on you, and other people aren't betting you. And so you find yourself in these scenarios that we self-create, right? You didn't yeah. have to go up the mountain, no. but you still find yourself in this position of like, yeah, I could stop, but I'm not going to. Did you sled down? I did. I actually did. <laughs> did you? <jump. laughs> Quite a few, yeah. Cause That's the best part. They, they call it scree, I think. There's like lots of little tiny stones, and you can jump and then slide. and. That's and real? Run, jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, I did wow. a lot of that. Took oh me two God. days, but I ended up down into the rainforest, and then there was monkeys everywhere, and then I was <sighs> just like, what? F I finally got back to my family, and it was it was a beautiful time. That's amazing. That's incredible. I want to do something yeah, like that. Me that, too. That was, we're that we're supposed great. to. I don't want the chest infection thing, but I want to do the yeah. rest of it. We're supposed to do an outdoor survival thing. Oh yeah, that's two years old. Yeah, we've been playing and we haven't done it yet. We have. We have. We get on to it. We go got to go learn how to survive in the wild. Oh, we really? take a class. Oh, that's. It's like two days. Shows right? us how to like d survive out. Two days we go out into make the a fire woods. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, build a shelter. Yeah, well, we got way into that show. Food. We got into that show alone. Where they go out. Oh, yeah. I like, like that show. I, mean, I love it. And yeah. so we were like, let's train for this show. And then uh, I got him. My wife got me a gift, and I got him the same gift so we could both go. <laughs> and yeah. we haven't got That was like two <laughs> years ago. That was like two years ago. We still haven't gone. Uh, I don't even know where it is. So two and a half years I think ago. We're, I don't even know what's going to happen. It's I took a picture happen. of mine, so I have my code. Okay. We're good. You do it, man. Wow. Brendan, 
Uh, this was great. You, I don't, I don't know that this letter would have been great if you hadn't been here. <laughs> yeah, you really took it. You gave My it. Experiences. You gave yeah. it some blood. Yeah. Also, kudos to us, yeah. man. We knew how to tee you up. Ghosts in this. Ghosts, Thank bungee you. jumping. We do our research. Um. Man, that was Glad awesome. To be God, here. I can make it. <laughs> I just, if you, there's any other people out there that are actually doing shit, uh, yeah, get me back oh, on. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you go, I'll do your podcast <laughs> so we can actually have shit to talk about together. <laughs> These two Fighting fucks. sharks? Hey, give us a call. Would you do Great White Shark in a cage? Would you do that? I, I yeah. One of our fans invited me that. to do it. The only thing I, the, I, I was sold on it until they said it's, it's uh, three days out and three days back to get there. Oh, and I was wow. like, that's... Yeah. T- that is there anything closer to the yeah. shore? Is there anything just off the dock? Yeah, because I would do it. I'd get, I'll get in it. I would get in a cage with great whites. Yeah, well, there you go. I mean, do that it. All amazing. I can say three is just three days out and three days back. I know. If you're listening to do it, I would love. To, I still would love to do it. Let me know if they ever. That's a long distance. Also, why wasn't I invited? Okay, yeah. I don't I think you know. talked about it. Do you want to do? Would you do it? Well, not three days out, but also I wasn't invited. In a vacuum, would you get in a cage with great white sharks swimming around? I would. I don't need to be inside a vacuum. I'll do it. I'll just get inside the cage. <laughs> with a vacuum. I'll go in with a vacuum in case they try to come at me. You're a, a Dyson. <laughs> you said Ow. you would? Huh? You said you would? Yeah. 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 Me too. Um, all right, Brendan. Thanks so much for this yeah. letter. It was great. Uh, you take care, Brendan. Just always use the, gr- the, the, the best safety stuff and yeah. uh, look Check. after yourself. Yeah. As well. Check that, check that door always for heat. Always have someone with you as well. Never yes. do yes. these kind of things yes. on your own. Yeah. Um, all right. Hey, August, you can go see Reese if you're in the New York area. Make sure you do it. Yeah, Other more, than that, more, follow him more on. deets on that as we go through time together in the next few months. Yeah. I hope so. New York is a big state. <laughs> yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, know where, where I'm performing. <laughs> I've said it now, so it's probably going to be Could be Syracuse, could be the Lower East Side. We don't at know. Too Hot to Handle, <laughs> at Too Hot to Trot, both of those. Yeah. All right, we wish you well. Sincerely, your pen pals, Daniel Van Kirk, Rory Scovel, and Reese Dobby. I just bother you to talk into your mic. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Testing the mic. <clears throat> and then I'll talk like this, and now and again I'll go. What? Oh, no. <laughs>